All right, so our last topic of <clears throat> the whole semester, column buckling. All right, so imagine you've got a pretty uh, skinny column, right? Something that's pretty tall and kind of skinny. Um, and so let's talk about the slenderness ratio, uh, L over R, um, if like R is kind of like a radius or a dimension, you know, in, of the cross section. Um, the larger the slenderness ratio, <clears throat> right, the larger this value, the L over R. So let's, let's say we've got a circular pipe beam. Um, the larger the slenderness ratio, then maybe it's very, very tall with a very, very small radius. So um, let's kind of think about a, we've got yeah, something kind of skinny, right? And, and if, if we're pushing down with a force P right here, <clears throat> Um, then <clears throat> large L over R's, those will buckle before crushing, before yielding. When we talked earlier about the yield stress, that was talking about how if we push it down with a force P, then this will compress, you know, it will compress some little... Uh, value uh, delta x or delta l, but <clears throat> the the taller and skinnier it is, the larger the slenderness ratio. It's not just going to compress like this; uh, it's going to buckle, right? It's going to bow out <clears throat> and buckle and break and fracture before it yields. So, larger l over r ratios will buckle before yielding. <clears throat> and the book has derived, <clears throat> you can look at this pretty tough, rough um, uh, derivation, uh, but they've derived the force that will cause uh, columns to buckle. All right, and so that is the force here, P critical. <clears throat> this is the axial force that will cause a column to buckle. And so we, we can calculate the force and say, hey, uh, let's, let's, let's make sure this doesn't buckle. Let's see what force will cause it to buckle. Um, and then we can maybe kind of compare that to the force that would cause it to yield <clears throat> and kind of compare. Oh, this one buckles before it yields, but some shorter ones will yield before it buckles. So anyway, the critical force, P critical, is pi squared EI over KL squared. <clears throat> the force that a column will buckle is pi squared EI over KL squared. <clears throat> For just a minute, this K is 1 for pinned and pinned columns, <clears throat> and that's what we're going to focus on the, the next two pages. <clears throat> so it's really pi squared over EI, <clears throat> pi squared times EI over L squared. Let's put that K in there for just a minute. But the K is 1 for pin pin columns. So anyway, pi squared E modulus of elasticity. I is the area moment of inertia. It's the shape, <clears throat> right? The I is kind of a measure of how much area is away from the neutral axis. So there we go. We can use this to find what axial force will cause mine to buckle. And you might could compare that to, hey, what axial force will cause it to yield? <clears throat> now, uh, for a circular cross-section, <clears throat> the critical stress, um, and so we could, we could think, okay, what is the I for a circular cross-section? Um, it has radius in here, um, <clears throat> But we can look on a formula sheet for the I. So you can do this for a circular cross section. You can find the stress, right? Take the force divided by the area. 
and take this divided by the area, but I over A, this really simplifies. Here we go. Critical stress, <clears throat> pi squared E over L over radius squared, KL over radius squared. So I think that is on our formula sheet. Um, or the, and what I always do, I, I wouldn't even use that. I wouldn't um, <clears throat> have an equation for the critical stress. But the critical stress is just the critical force over the area. <clears throat> right, just the critical force over the area. So we need to check to see if the critical stress, the stress that causes buckling, <clears throat> is less than the stress that causes yielding to see which one happens first. And so to, to maybe kind of guard against, hey, <clears throat> we've been looking at yield stress. We've been making sure it doesn't fail due to yielding. We also need to make sure it doesn't fail due to buckling because it could fail due to buckling under a much smaller stress or it could fail there, you know, first, right? Okay, and then let's let's think about a yardstick. All right, so let's think. Let's say we've got some yardstick, right? Yardstick's very skinny, right here, and we put a force right here. Imagine a yardstick. If I was looking down the barrel of that yardstick, um, you know, maybe it's it's point one, you know, inch right here, and it's. 1.0 inches, you know, that's the, it, it's a rectangle, <clears throat> but it has a smaller dimension on one side than the other side, right? Okay, um, if you have a cross section that it, it looks like a rectangle or maybe an I-beam or something, it has a one dimension on one side is, is small, you know, the length is smaller than the depth, let's say the width, and the depth right here, then you can imagine if you pushed on this yardstick, you know which way it would buckle, right? So it would buckle that way as opposed to buckling t towards you, towards the paper, right? It's definitely a lot stronger buckling one way than the other way. So it's going to buckle e either this way or this way, <clears throat> right? It's going to buckle this way or this way, but it is not going to buckle out towards you um, because it's a lot stronger that way. And it's because of the eye. It's because of the moment of inertia, the area moment of inertia. So let's, let's, let me just write this sentence. All right. If <clears throat> if everything else is constant, The column will buckle about the weaker axis. The weaker axis is the axis with the smaller I. The smaller I, right? Think about this. This one, the IX, is 1 12th B H cubed. And that would be the I about that axis. All right. But the I about this axis, the I Y is 1 12th H B cubed. This one is a lot smaller. And so it is going to buckle about this axis right here, which is this type of buckling as opposed to buckling about the stronger axis which would be means it would be bowing out towards me all right so it will buckle about the weaker axis the weaker has the smaller eye so if everything else is constant use the smaller eye in p critical equals pi squared e i over l over kl squared 
Okay, so it, it's going to buckle about the weaker axis unless you brace the weaker axis or unless the weaker axis is constrained differently. Uh, so anyway, use the smaller of the area moments of inertia, I, in the pi squared EI over KL squared. And right now, K is 1. It's almost like it's not there. K equals 1 for pinned and pinned supported um, columns. So, for example, if you've got something that is pinned right here and pinned right here, uh, then, um, <coughs> then our K is going to be equal to 1. We're going to start with that, start with those problems to begin with.